Hey guys, Pogo here, and welcome to the next episode of Advanced Java Concepts. In this episode, I'm going to show you guys Reflection. Reflection is a really cool and very powerful feature of Java, excuse me, that allows you to get information about uh, classes and the components inside of classes while your program is running, and you can actually modify them. I'm going to show you what this means if it doesn't make sense right now. And we're going to use this person class that I wrote. It contains a private instance field called name. It has a private static field called numPeople. And you'll see that every time a new person is instantiated, numPeople has one added to it. So right now it's zero. If I instantiated one person, numPeople would then be one. I have a constructor that takes in the name, sets the name, and adds one to numPeople. I have a getter and a setter, and I have a static method called printPerson that takes in a person and prints out their name. Not very useful, but it is useful for this demonstration of reflection. Today, I'm going to show you that there are actually two ways to access everything in here. Name, numPeople, person, constructor, get name, set name, and print person. And in some cases, the traditional way doesn't even work and you would have to use reflection if you wanted to access it. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to start by instantiating a person the regular way. So create a person named Pogo. And our first challenge is we want to be able to access this private string name. We want to be able to access it directly to get and set its value. So if we try to do this the regular way, p.name, you'll see, or well, let's just say that we want to try to print it out. You'll see that uh, that doesn't work because person.name is not visible. This is a private instance field, so we can't access it from here. We would have to make it public, which we could do, but if you're trying to access this inside of a class that you didn't write, you wouldn't have that option. So by using the regular method, we've failed. And we're just going to say error not accessible. Is that right? Accessible? Yeah. Okay, so that obviously doesn't work. Let's go ahead and try using reflection to access it. Everything that you do with reflection is going to be inside of a try and catch because uh, every, pretty much anything that you do with reflection has a chance of throwing a ton of exceptions. Uh, so you never know what could go wrong. So I'm just going to have it print out the stack trace, but you'll notice that we're not going to trigger any exceptions. Maybe we'll trigger one just to show it. So first thing that we're going to do is we know that this is a non-static instance field. So we need to have an instance of person in order to access it. It's different for, for every single person, so we need an instance. We have this person instance right here. So we can say p dot, because we need to have this instance. And you'll notice that there are all these methods that are declared for us. Most of them we never use. But now we're going to use this method called get class. And what this is going to do is it's going to return the class object that represents this class. This is part of the object class, so everything, uh, any object will have it. And when I do get class, it's going to return an instance of the class class of type person. It is, uh, it does have generics on it. So when I do p.getClass, I'm getting uh, information about this class. And if I do dot, you'll notice that there are tons of interesting looking methods in here. We're going to start off by getting access to a field. That's what Java and Reflection call them. So we want to say get declared field. And you'll see get declared field and it has string name. The name of the field is name, because if we go take a look, we'll see that it is name. Now, let's try printing it out. So we'll do system.out.println, uh, and we actually we need to save this. So we're going to say field field is equal to. It's going to return an instance of java.lying.reflect.field. So make sure you implement or import the correct one. And let's name that correctly. So it's now going to return the declared field called name. Now let's go ahead and access it. We're going to say field.get. There are these options for the primitive types, get boolean, get char, get double. So if you're dealing with a double, you would use the get double method. But we'll just use the get method. 
It takes one parameter, which is the object. Since we need an instance of person in order to use this, we're going to give it p, which is our instance of person. So it'll get the value of name for that. Let's go ahead and hit run. Okay, we got an exception. Uh, class main cannot access a member of class person with modifiers private. All right, we know that this is a private instance field, and we had the same similar problem before. What we can do with reflection is we can say field dot set accessible true. So we're essentially forcing this field to be accessible to us. And if I run it now, you'll see that it says pogo. So even though it's private, I'm overriding the fact that it's private and saying this is going to be accessible to me, and now it is. I'm invoking it, I'm using this get method, and I'm giving it my instance of person, then it returns the value of name. So that is how you use reflection to directly access a variable that is private. You could also do it with something that's public, you just wouldn't need the set accessible. One quick note that I'm going to write at the top of this code, because this is very important. Um, if you are using something that is inherited, sorry, replace, you want to replace get declared field with get field. You would replace um, get declared method with get method. And uh, I think that's it. Um, when I use declared field, get declared field, that is declared right here inside of the person class. But if person inherited from something um, and you were trying to access, like if person inherited from an animal class, let's say, and animal has name in it and you want to access name that's defined in animal, not person, you would use get field, not get declared field. So if it's inherited, get field, and get method. We'll look at get method in a second. So that's very important. Uh, reflection gets one point because it was able to do something that uh, regular was not able to do. So now it's time for the next step. Let's go ahead. Oops. Let's go ahead and try to uh, get access to this num people. And we'll go ahead and try to print it out. So we have our instance of person, which we don't actually need. We're just going to say person dot num people. And you'll see it says it's not visible. So again, the same thing happened. Error, not accessible. So regular Java failed us there. Let's see if we can do this with reflection. We're first going to surround it with the try and catch. Okay. Um, and now we'll go ahead and give it a try. So we're going to get our field, but this time we don't need an instance of the class in order to use it. So we can do it like this. We can say person.class. And they're both going to have, I believe, the same outcome. I'm not 100% sure. There might be a slight difference, but I don't believe that there is. So we're going to use person.class because uh, let's just assume that we don't have an instance of person here. We're accessing a static instance field, so um, or a static field, I should say. So we don't need an instance to do that. So we're going to still get the declared field. It's a declared field, and it's called num people. We're going to have to force it accessible because it is private. And now when we go to print it out, field.get, it wants an object, but we can just write null because we don't, we're not giving it a specific instance. And in this case, it doesn't matter. It doesn't need a specific instance. If I hit run, you'll see it says 1. It was zero, but I have this one instance right here, so num people is one. So uh, again, reflection gets another point because it was able to do something that regular old Java was not able to do. You might not see the uh, use for this right now, but if you are working with some sort of an API or a library that you can't change directly, and you need to do something like access a private instance field or really anything that's private, um, this is the only way that you would really be able to do that. So it can be useful in some very specific cases. So we were able to get access to that, and again, we did not give it an instance of the person class because it is static and it doesn't need to have an instance. Time for the next thing. We're going to access get name and set name. So let's start with get name. We want to be able to 
get the name of the person, and we're going to print it out. So I could just print out p.getName, and that's just fine. If I go ahead and run it, you'll see it prints out Pogo. So uh, Java, plain Java, was able to do that for us. Let's see if we can do it with reflection. We need, of course, our try and catch. And this time, we're not using a field, we're using a method. So we're going to use method method is equal to p.getClass.getDeclared method. And the name of the method is getName. And we need the parameter types. Now, in this case, there are no parameters. So I'm just not going to write anything there. I'm just going to leave that blank. So now we're getting this getName method, and there aren't going to be any parameters. And we're going to import that method. We don't need to set it accessible because it is public, but if it weren't public, you would need to. And now we'll go ahead and print it out. We're going to say method.invoke. Again, it's that object that we're invoking it on. We're invoking it on P because this is non-static. It needs the instance. And in this case, there are no args, so we're just going to leave that blank. We don't have any arguments. Let's go ahead and try running it, and you'll see it prints out Pogo. So in this case, they were both able to handle it. Uh, it looks a little bit cleaner, a lot cleaner, really, in plain Java, but they were both able to take on this same problem. Uh, next, we're going to do set name. It's going to be very similar, but now it has a, um, a variable, or it has an, a uh, parameter. So let's just do it the plain Java way first. P dot set name pogo stick twenty nine, and then we'll just print it out so that we can prove that it worked. Now we're going to do it the reflection way. Okay, again, this is a method, method, method is equal to p.getClass.getDeclaredMethod. method. The name of it is set name, and it has one parameter, which is a string, so we're going to write string.class. So we're getting the declared method name set name that has a string parameter, and that's going to correspond with this. Now we'll go ahead and say method.invoke. We're invoking it on p, and the argument is going to be pogostick29. Finally, we'll just print out the name, and to quickly just show you, we'll set the name back to Pogo, what it was before, to prove that it actually is working. And you'll see it prints out Pogo Stick 29 twice. The first time with the set name, and then we print it out. And the second time, we set it back to Pogo, but doing this, it clearly works. Set it to Pogo Stick 29, so then we print out the name, and it's Pogo Stick 29. So those are the methods. We got two things left. We're going to access this static method, and then we're also going to access the constructor. Let's get that static method. Again, this is going to be very similar to the other methods. So we'll go ahead and, again, this just takes in a person and then prints out their name. So we can just write person dot print person p, and that's just fine. Now we'll do it using reflection. Okay, now we will go ahead and say method method is equal to person.class. Remember, this is a static method, so we don't need an instance of it. And it's going to be get declared method. The name of it is going to be print person. And you'll see it takes one parameter, which is of type person, so person.class. We don't need to set it accessible because it is public to us. Um, and we're just going to say method.invoke. We're invoking it. We're invoking it on null because it is static, so we don't need anything. But the argument we're going to give it is p. And if I run it, you'll see it prints out pogo stick 29 two times more. First time from here, and the second time from there. Finally, we'll go ahead and instantiate a person using the constructor. So, uh, regular Java way, let me just put my divider in here. The regular Java way will say um, person other is equal to new person um, ogop, my evil twin brother. And uh, we'll just go ahead and print out their name. Uh, we'll just do person dot print person other just to show that that did actually work. And now we're going to do this 
in reflection. We're going to instantiate a new person. So we are going to be accessing this constructor, so we're going to use the constructor class. So constructor, this does have a um, type parameter. It's going to be person. This is a constructor for a person, so it's constructor of type person. Constructor, let's call that right, is equal to uh, person dot class. Again, we don't need an instance of person because theoretically we wouldn't have one right now. We're creating one now. Dot get constructor. And it's going to say what parameters does it have? It has one, which is the string name. So we're getting this constructor that has one parameter. And I don't think. Oh, it does have get declared constructor. Okay. So get declared constructor. And we'll import constructor. And now we'll go ahead and use it. We're going to say other is equal to constructor dot new instance and the initialization args it takes one string so the string is going to be ogop and now we'll do person dot print person other and if we run it it will print out ogop two times first time it did it here when we instantiated it the regular way and printed it the second time it did it here we got the constructor from the class then we created a new instance supplying the one parameter that it needed and then we printed it out so why is reflection useful? It seems like other than these first two examples of accessing private instance fields or private methods or private constructors, otherwise it doesn't seem terribly useful. Well, the main use is, of course, for things that are private. Um, it's really just for things that aren't accessible to you that you need to do. Uh, you can also, if you load a class at runtime, so we have these main and person classes here, but if you were to actually add a class after the program starts, then you would be using these methods to instantiate it because Java wouldn't know that the class is there if you're loading it after runtime. So you would have to use reflection to instantiate it or uh, you know, do any of the other operations that it would have. And uh, for those of you who do Minecraft related stuff, this is the core concept of the NMS net.minecraft.server stuff. All of that stuff is not directly accessible to us, so we need to use reflection in order to access it. That's a great example of a library or API. We can't change it ourselves. We can't take the code and modify it like I could with the person class, so we have to use this reflection workaround or else we won't have any access, it, access to it at all. So, as always, subscribe if you want to see more, comment with what you want to learn. If you like this video, click the like button, and I'll see you guys soon with some more coding. Bye for now.